Thirteen has come to an end, and we are here with all of you on this Saturday night or Sunday morning, depending where you're at around the globe, for the UFC Vegas Thirteen post fight show on MMAfighting.com. I am Mike Heck, being joined by Jose Youngs and E. Casey Lydon. Thank you all for joining us, and for those watching live right now, because you may get this after the fact. Get those questions, your thoughts on the event in the chat, and we'll get to them momentarily. But uh, Jose, let us begin with you, kind sir. The main event saw the return of Tiago Santos for the first time since his fight with John Jones, where a lot of people thought he won that fight, which is kind of the uncrowned champion. Suffered a plethora of injuries in that fight, basically tore his left knee to shreds, amongst other injuries, taking on a surging Glover Teixeira, and in the end, Glover gets rocked a couple of times. He battles through it each and every time at 41 years of age and gets it done with a rear naked choke in the third round. What a freaking fight. Your thought on tonight's main event and the performance of one Glover Teixeira. It was awesome, man. It was a good fight. I thought it was the better fight of the night. I'm sure we're going to talk about the bonuses later. Uh, but I, after the fight, I thought that was a lock for fight of the night. It had pretty much all the makings of Tiago Santos performance outside of him just tearing through his opponents because let's not forget before he lost to john jones he was rattling off these wins over like eric anders uh jimmy manua current champion jan bohovich like he would just come out like a bat out of hell like i remember i was i did a preview show with sean al shoddy before i think it was the jan bohovich fight or maybe the john jones fight and we were comparing him to like a like a, a weed whacker with chainsaws at the end of it instead of the the little <laughs> string. So, uh, Jago Santos is uh, an unpredictable, violent human being. Uh, Glove Chair just somehow survived the onslaught that I think a lot of people were surprised that he did survive, considering he's he's been put away by 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 attacks like that from Anthony Johnson. Uh, John Jones obviously didn't put him away, but just beat kind of beat the soul out of him. Uh, so we've seen Glove to share succumb to these these sorts of uh, attacks, and not only did he survive, uh, he took Tiago Santos completely out of his game, took put him on his back, uh, survived more onslaught after more on, onslaught after onslaught, turned the tide and ended up submitting him in the third round. So yeah, awesome performance from Glover, uh, really awesome performance from Tiago Santos. Just Glover got it done, took took Tiago right out of his element, put him on his back, and tapped him out. Casey, what did you think of this tippy top fight at 205? Because I, I, I pretty much predicted it. I mean, I, th I thought it was going to be like a third or a fourth round TKO. It ended up being a submission. So AK kind of got that one right. But I said he'd get dropped and be in some big trouble early. But man, no matter how big those shots were early on, he just kept going for that takedown, was taking elbows to the face, kept going and finally got a transition right into mount. And the fight just kind of kept going that way through the second round. And the third round, he gets dropped again. I was like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. And then turns it over, gets a submission, and we're out. So what did you think of his performance in the fight overall? Well, we just um, – we, we saw an amazing fight. Uh, I, I believe it was fight of the night. Um, like, like Jose said, like that fight had everything. It had high stakes, grappling, wrestling, striking, comebacks, you know, almost finishes, you know, comebacks within rounds. I mean, that went from a 10-8 round for Santos to a 10-9 for Glover. So that was just – those are those, those just great rounds, you know. And, and – but – not surprised. I mean, that fight was kind of like what, yeah, like you said, what we expected. If if Glover was going to win that fight, that's kind of how he wins. And um, I thought Santos was going to. I predicted Glover was going to win a decision, much, but I, um, but I think Santos just kind of. I think I, I don't know if he gassed out, but um, man, that third round when he dropped Glover and then he went to the ground I was like no just stand him up stand him <laughs> up man so um just a just a big strategic error i feel from santos um yeah from santos after he dropped glover in the beginning of the third round but uh holy moly glover is just so good that's uh, that's all just maybe maybe the most underappreciated at least light heavyweight in the in in all of the ufc for sure so as you guys can probably tell, as good as the main event was, it was not the fight of the night. The fight of the night went to Hayoni Barcelos versus Khalid fight. Taha, which was an excellent fight. Great fight. It was not the best fight of the night, but that's ne neither here nor there. Uh, Dana White did speak to ESPN after the fight, and he said basically he hears what Glover is saying about wanting a title shot, and he's not wrong, but that's as far as it went. So <laughs> I guess my question to you, Jose, is – where does he go from here? Because it seemed like the bells and whistles were there for this fight when it was first booked until a week ago when Dana White announces that Blahovich is going to fight Israel Adesanya. And it appears if 
as if Glover, no matter how many fights in a row he's won, how many finishes he's had, he's going to have to wait a little while if his next fight's going to be for the belt. So do you think he'll just wait to see how things play out here? Uh, does he just say, eh, you know what? I'm just going to stay active. Give me another fight. Like, what do you think is going to happen? I think a few years ago, uh, I think he would have maybe taken a fight, maybe maybe a fight or two just in case someone got hurt. He could stay on schedule, maybe hop in. But he's on the wrong side of 40. I don't think he wants to take any fights uh, at this part, at this age and this part of his career and risk these title shots that he's he's worked so hard to get. I mean, you put in all the work, you lose. You like like we've said, we've seen Glove Teixeira string these wins together, and like like if he had beat Anthony Johnson, he probably would have fought Daniel Cormier. Uh, he's had all of these, I and mean, obviously he lost 13 seconds at UFC 202, so that went out the window. But he's had these these runs where he's one win away. And then he falls, he comes up short, or he gets beat by Corey Anderson or Phil Davis, or he get, and then he has to restart. And they not only do they does he have to restart, he kind of gets re, he, he starts back at the bottom. Uh, like if you look at some of the the fights he's taken coming off of losses, they're not the biggest names, they're not the most exciting names, and he has to just it, he he the UFC doesn't give him any breaks, like one <laughs> loss, and he's all of a sudden back at the starting point. So. Uh, if I'm glove share, I don't risk this spot. I've earned it. I've did enough. I've clearly beat the number one contender. Yes, Dominic Reyes has to fight Jared Prohaska. So if Lahovich and Izzy do have to fight in March, and that fight is insane, and someone gets hurt, maybe Glover doesn't want to fight. Maybe we wait for that fight to play out. But if I'm glove share, I wait it out. I've done more than enough to fight for the title at this point. Casey is Glover Teixeira's best bet that Israel Adesanya like prices himself out of this title fight so that they can slide him in? Like, is that, like, the best-case scenario right now? I think Glover's screwed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's screwed. I just, you know, when, 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 when I said that Glover may be the most underappreciated um, fighter and light heavyweight, that's really a euphemism for saying that the UFC just doesn't care about him. He's a really good fighter, but they're never going to – they're never going to give them the benefit of a doubt, I guess. You know, you know, yeah, you did lose to John Jones, you know, whatever. It's been 20, 20 not 20 years, but it's been a long time since that fight <laughs> happened. He is clearly, he has clearly earned his title shot, another shot at the crown again. But I, I just don't think he has the personality or just that the UFC wants to push because he's just a, a nice guy that beats the crap out of people and then he doesn't talk he just doesn't he doesn't move that needle like the UFC wants to do and and I can I, I think I actually I disagree with Jose if if Glover is going to get a title shot an actual title shot he has to make it like he has to go into some Tony Ferguson type streak he's going to have to fight the winner of Yuri um uh, Reyes right is that is that mm -hmm. is that the yeah. fight mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. he's going to fight that winner and then who knows what happens after that because and now with Izzy tying up the the, the the title or potentially tying the title i don't know it's just crazy like if izzy wins then the title's just gonna be on hold for a while because he'll probably go back to 85 so you got john jones no, in he's there going again. up to heavyweight remember oh, going he's gonna heavyweight. go fight john yeah, jones no, the heavyweight I, I, I honestly i think i think leverage is screwed i just i think i don't i don't think there's anything he can do to get a title shot i mean dana freaking said it oh yeah you you totally earned it and that was <laughs> i was like yeah yeah you yeah so yeah, he's, he's not wrong. He's just that, that was it. He's not wrong. He's not, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, funny because yeah. <laughs> Glover's like, "Come on, dude. Come on, Dana. Like, you're gonna give the title shot to Adesanya? Come on. I'm 41 years old. Give me a shot." And then he's like, "You know, thank you, Dana. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Love you, UFC. Love everybody. Thank you very much." And blows everybody a kiss. It was just such a sweet move by Glover to share. Classic, classic to share. A great win for him. Uh, we had the we announced the fight of the night. Performances of the night went to Giga Chikadze. And Alexander Romanov, man, I'm very excited to see Romanov and see where he goes in this heavyweight division. But uh, for those watching right now, leave your thoughts and questions about the card in the chat, and we'll get to them very soon. But uh, we'll talk about the co-main event, although we'll, we'll do so briefly. Andrei Arlovsky plays spoiler once again, earns a unanimous decision over Tanner Bozier. Certainly not the most exciting fight in the world, Jose, but uh, Arlovsky fought very, very smart. Definitely landed the bigger shots throughout the fight, and and got the win. So how did you score that one, Jose? And what did you think of the fight in general? Because, you know, not the best fight in the world. I didn't really score it at all when it was happening. I just, at the end of the fight, I was just like, I think Andre Arlovsky won just because I remember more of what he did than what Tanner Poser did. Uh, but it's just, that's how uh, Andre Arlovsky's wins have gone lately. Like his, 
his win against Tanner Bose, his win against Philippe Lenz or Lenz, his win against Ben Rothwell, his win against Stefan Struve, who was before, was it Junior Albini when he was wearing that diaper thing? So, like, those are like his last few wins, and they're all decisions, and they're heavyweight decisions, and they're not slobber knockers. Like, like we all have these this rosy memory of like his fight against Travis Brown that was just insane that he won. But then, like, his last few losses have been like a destruction at the hands of Jairzinho Rosenstrick, uh, Augusto Sakai, Walt Harris, uh, tied to Ivasa, Nganu, Stipe, Josh Barnett, Overeem. Like, he's losing violently. And losing badly, and then he's just pulling off these decisions that aren't like dominant, well put together decision wins. He's doing just enough, which is, which is all you need. Well, win is a win. You get a whole, you get the rest of your paycheck if you win. Uh, but it is what it is. It's just like I said, the, these are the type of wins Andre Arlovski is pulling off in 2020. But he's again, he's on the other side of 40, and he's still winning in the UFC in 2020. So I can't knock him for what he's doing. Casey, I scored it for Tanner Bozier, and maybe just because, you know, we do our little pick'em thing on our Slack channel. And had Bozier gotten the nod, I would have had a perfect night with my pick. So kind of <laughs> bummed about that, but be that as it may. How did you score the fight? And I guess one of the questions I had coming out of it was, do you feel like Tanner Bozier was a little starstruck here? Because, I mean, he talked about in the media day how honored he was to fight a guy like Andre Olofsky. He was going to take him very seriously, but it you know, was he like a little starstruck? I mean, we've seen this happen times before. I, I don't know if, I mean, Arlovsky's not, you know, steep A or DC, but still, I mean, the guy was a former champion. He's been around a long time. No, I don't, um, I don't think starstruck is the right word for Bozer. Um, oh, but back to the score. Um, I did score for Arlovsky. I thought um, basically um, I, I scored the heavier punches by Arlovsky over the volume of um, leg kicks for Bozer. And that's going to be very subjective, really. Um, the reason why I didn't give it to Bozer because um, Arlovsky just has a really good poker face. And even though he was eating those kicks, he wasn't showing visible damage. He wasn't limping. He wasn't switching stance. He just seemed to eat him and move on of it. So because of that, um, the big punches that Arlovsky were landing seemed more significant. So I went damaged. But um, I had no, I would have no issue um, if Bozer would have won that fight. Um, but I did pick Arlovsky in my picks, so maybe... No, no, I didn't pick... I picked Bozer. Crap. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but no, I, I picked Bozer to win a boring decision, though. I thought Bozer was... You so did. I was right in that. I, I thought... Because Arlovsky is so good at... Even he even though he may lose the fight, he will make his opponent fight as, at his pace. Because... Maybe it's just Arlovsky is just an intimidating looking guy. I don't know, but guys just don't want to get knocked out by him. And Bozier just seemed to be really afraid of getting knocked out. I think. And um, even though Arlovsky in the last shoot, when's when's his last like real finish? When's last time he Arlovsky? Finished? Yeah, when's last time he the won? Brown one? The Travis Brown one. I said. So what? That was a decade ago. No, what, that was two thousand fifteen. Right? right? Yeah, <laughs> it felt like a decade ago. Yeah. So it's been over five years since you know. So. Clearly, I guess the the reputation as far as Arlovsky having one punch like knockout power or, or something carries over. Maybe those highlight reels really work, but yeah, it's it's. I think all we're gonna really take away from this fight is that it's just a, a learning lesson for Bozer that he's just gotta go for it more. I guess. It's, yeah. So, Jose, what do you like? This was kind of. I think the UFC kind of built this as a setup fight for Bozier to sort of get to that next level, kind of test him to see where he's at. Is he a top 15 heavyweight? Can he go beyond that? Didn't really pass tonight's test. In fact, he didn't at all because he lost the fight, but where does he go from here? Do you think he could be a guy that, yeah. Do you think he could be a top 10 guy or is this just not the place for him right now? Well, I mean, it's the heavyweight division in the UFC. Anyone can be a top 10 if you can throw, if you can string a couple wins together. But he's going to have to fight Maurice Green. I'll do your job for you for your uh, yeah. on to the next one. Like, they already have the, the war of words between them. They ran in. They had that run in with each other at the Fighter Hotel at one of their Vegas cards. They tried to fight each other on Fight Island. They tried to make that fight, and it didn't happen. So uh, they're both coming off losses. Uh, so I don't see why they don't pull the UFC doesn't pull the trigger now because they both wanted the fight already, and now it actually makes it made sense then. It makes more sense now. So uh, yeah, Tanner Bozer, he I'm not gonna say he doesn't belong in the UFC because he clearly does. He has a couple, he has some good sure. wins, but who's he lost to? Arlovsky and what Cyril Gone? Like who's yep. he losing to? Yeah, yeah. He's losing to uh, like really good fighters, and he's beating everyone else. So yeah, 
uh, Bozer versus uh, Murray's Green, Crochet Boss is uh, the fight to make. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I didn't mean like that because Bozer's very talented, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I don't want him to take my words the wrong way because he'll come right after yeah, yeah. me and <laughs> you know start a campaign that people hate on me on Twitter. But there are a right. lot of people, even though he has been against this talk for a long time now, and he kind of craps on it every time he's asked about. It, there's a lot of people who feel like he could drop to 205. Why? I think it's yeah. crazy, yeah. but there are people who believe he can do that. Sure, I mean. He looks like what is he six one six two two thirty? I mean, it wouldn't be out of the question, but it's it's up to him. Like, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Yeah, but no, no you know. way. Nah, and yeah. I'm not asking you to do that either, Tanner. <laughs> but yes, fight more screen. I like that. <laughs> I, like that. <laughs> I like that idea. Maybe give him the Greg Hardy fight. Who knows? That's that's not a bad that's idea fine. either. But yeah. why not do Arlovski and Greg Hardy? They're coming off wins. Well, they're both at ATT ish. That's true. I don't think Hardy's there anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Is that a team? Is that a team? Is it it a bunch of guys that just train under the same roof? Yes. Well, I mean, we've seen it before. I mean, same manager. Yeah, it's tough. That's Mm -hmm. tough to do. Yeah, there's a bunch of mini camps within ATT. It's such a large school right now. I I know know what you're saying. Yes. But but, um, Uh, I I don't think – I know you didn't ask me, but I'm gonna throw my answer in here. <laughs> but um, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think this is necessarily as far as how the UFC looks at Bozer. I think he's pretty much just in the same position. If he would have got the, if he got his hand sure. raised, I think, you know, yeah, bigger. He got more more money, a bigger paycheck. But like next week, we have um, what's the co-main event? Worthy and um, Arasan. Um, uh, what's the co-main event next week? Either way, it's just two guys who are coming off or coming <laughs> off losses. You know, yeah. And, uh, um, so, uh, what's the co-main event next week? Uh, Alassane. I'm it up right now. Alassane versus, uh, uh, Kama Worthy. Two guys. No, versus, versus Chaos Williams. Oh. Yeah. That's a co-main event? Holy crap. Chaos. Yeah, Chaos Williams <laughs> oh, and Kama Worthy. Sorry. I got them confused. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, they are. I get those two confused all of the time. And their personalities could not be more different. Okay. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Well, what a loss in the UFC like this. I think heavyweight. I think Bozier's fine. I think he, he'll get. He'll. He'll. He's gonna fight another guy, borderline top, board, just out of the rankings type of guy. And um, yeah, I. We're honestly, if, ask me in six months who won this fight. We're 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 not gonna remember anything from it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, before we go to the chat, I I did have one question on Twitter because. Uh, this gentleman at Bobby Atkins reached out. He doesn't know he's at work, working the overnight shift. Good on you. Uh, probably not going to be able to watch live, but he had an interesting question. Casey, I'm going to throw this at you first before we get to the chat. More likely 40 and over future champion, Glover Teixeira, Yoel Romero, or Alistair Overeem? If you go purely on skill set, I think it's Glover. I think Glover has the best chance of actually being the best in that division. Um, but to get the title shot, you gotta put, you gotta put you no know, quote quote butts in seats. You know what, what that term used to mean. But you gotta move the needle, and Glover just doesn't move the needle for the UFC. So I just, uh, I'll go over him. I will go to over, over him. That's, that's, that's a really interesting question. That's really interesting. It is. Unfortunately, Jose? politics gets thrown in there, oh. I think. Well, I don't think Yoel Romero sure. is going to fight a middleweight ever again. I have a feeling he's going to move up to light heavyweight now that John Jones is out of that division. Uh, so Yoel Romero and Glover would probably be fighting in the same division. Uh, I don't imagine them fighting for a title anytime soon, uh, fighting each other for a title anytime soon. So um, I would say Glover based solely on circumstances rather than the actual fight like if Izzy wins and then he doesn't want to defend light heavyweight and he just gives it up and then Glover's all of a sudden just fighting for a vacant title, he could win that for sure. I don't think Overeem's going to be champion, but he could fight for the – I think we have a better chance of seeing Overeem fight for the title before Glover Teixeira. I don't think Overeem yep. will win. So based on who could have a gold belt around their waist first, I'd probably say Glover because he actually has that spot right now as he could very well be fighting for a title next. Did you just book Glover versus Yoel Romero at 205? That's what I heard. I like that fight. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna say no. I never, I'm that never crossed no my mind fight. until it's like, oh, that's a pretty cool fight. Yeah, I mean, Yoel Romero against anyone at light heavyweight would be a fun fight. 
Like it'd be interesting. Like if they book Yoel against like a top five, like if they book like Yoel versus Tiago Santos and Yoel not, like Ooh. puts him away, like he he yeah. might be like automatically the next the next one. He might even skip yeah. Glover to get the title shot just because. Ratch- of what What's Ratchik? Ratchik is four or five or something like that. Four or five. So Ratchik, if 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 Glover is not gonna, if Glover wants a fight between then and now, it'd probably be against Ratchik, or if they just want to throw him Yoel Romero because. Who's after who's after Ratchet? Jerry? He's booked. And then after that, it's like a mishmash of like Vulcan, Anthony Smith, Nikita Krylov, Johnny Walker, Misha Serkinov. So pretty much anyone from the five up Glovers will have to fight again. Yeah. Or the winner. Of, I think probably the winner of Reyes versus Prohashka, especially if yeah, Jerry wins. Um, they'll probably yeah, just Ratchet right doesn't there. have a fight. And I know he's he's I know he's higher than Jerry. So if they want to make like three four fight or two three fight, like if Ratchet wants that doesn't have a fight and he fights Glover, because I'll get honestly, I would not I might even favor Ratchet against Glover to share just on how much of a freak that dude is inside the inside the octagon and how much he gets better. So uh I like that fight too, which is why if I'm Glover, I'm like, I'm not fighting this twenty eight year old kid in his prime. Give me my title shot. Glover Teixeira is like in the complete opposite position of Israel Adesanya a few weeks ago because yeah. Adesanya it was Adesanya has so many options this is great and Teixeira has so many options and they're all bad because yeah. the lowest option right now is the title shot it's crazy but it is what it is and uh, it's a great win for him he deserves it awesome and if the UFC wants to pull an audible I would not complain but I doubt that's going to happen so uh, why don't I, we check in oh god I don't think they're going to have Glover to share because as Casey described, he's just a nice guy who's a good fighter, doesn't talk trash and doesn't move the needle. The only other person that's like that in the top five is the champion, the John Blow. Right. So I don't think they're going to pull Israel out of sign. Who's probably the most exciting fighter across the board in terms of fighting style and personality to book John Blahovich and Glover to share. Awesome fight. Do like- Any of those fights are awesome, <laughs> but come on. They would do all their like talking head promos like side by side with their arms around each other. It'd be the friendliest they'll <laughs> yeah. do a fight of all time. 100%. I, 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 I mean, I like I that have, fight. I hope you have a great it's, camp. I hope they're just hope your family's great. <laughs> Let's have Win or lose, Sunday. like high five. Win or lose, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. Win or lose, Happy Thanksgiving. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Then tonight for like a night that I feel like I don't I don't think UFC's ever done it, but instead of any performance awards, I feel like it should have been just two fight of the nights. I felt the Utah like, Cassidy, I, I, w- I would have given a performance. For who? The head kick knockout. I just, that was I, nasty. It was nasty, but that was a showcase fight against a, a guy. Would he come in on a week's notice? Yeah, and I just think Giga because he has such a high pedigree in kickboxing and. Like you've seen all of his post fight press conferences after, because I'm such a mark for Giga oh, yeah. I mean, like I think on he's tw- great, yeah. I'm so, like I was such a fan of him in in, pro- in uh, when he was in Glory that I've been at his last few uh, post fight scrums and he's pissed. He's like visibly mad at his performance because he doesn't finish his opponent. So now that he finally has one, I feel like the UFC just gave him performance bonus just because of how annoyed he's been every single time. I just feel bad for Barcelos and Taha just to. That was such a good fight. It's just, it was, such a good fight. It's, it's just a great fight. It, it, uh, the reason I love fights like that because you're looking at these guys fight, and it's still highly technical. But it, I, you look at you look at their eyes like these guys are like fighting as if they're gonna, they're about to die in there. Like they're fighting 100%. to the death. You just get that feeling, like no matter like like Taj just taking all these punches. Like dude, Taj, you are way too tough, man. You need to go down. And then he's still putting a good hurt and back on um Barcelo. So. Man, um, I just I just feel bad for like Taha. He just got half his paycheck. I and think nothing. I hope I hope UFC drops it. Well, he they he got they got performance bonus right. Yeah, he got fifty G's. Who? He got fifty G's for fight of the night. Marcellus Taha and, and Taha. Yeah, oh, I'm that was fight of the night. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Santos. Then like, yeah. like, like well, yeah, yeah. I want Santos to make more money and stuff. I mean, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was like, I just feel I like, feel like I feel like it was, it was a, a double good... fight. Like, There's a double fight of the night night. Yeah. <laughs> It, in Taha, I think that's the type. Like, even if he's gonna lose, that's the performance you need. Because remember his last fight, he missed weight and he popped. He missed weight, he, he lost, and he popped. Yeah. Oh. So like, and so he hasn't fought a long time. Oh. Right. And like, that's the fight you need. You come off, you lose, 
you need that performance. Like, yeah. cause like the commentators are saying like, like Taha didn't lose any credibility in the eyes of the fans after that performance that like come, well, if he's going to lose, that's how you lose, especially after your last performance. Cause I can't remember if he lost, but I know he, he missed won. Late. I, I think. know he won. He won. I won. It's a no won contest. By submission. It's a no yeah. contest now anyway, but cause he's missed weight and popped. Mm. So he like, Gets fined, doesn't get his win bonus, and he's out forever. So yeah, uh, good on him for putting on a good fight. That was what a good you, what fight. What did he pop for? Um, I, it was a it was a banned substance. I know that. Okay. I don't know what the actual. Oh, bummer. It wasn't like a, I don't think it was a diuretic or anything. But I'm not okay. again. Right. I'm not hundred. Okay, just one. Just I know if it was like a weed thing or one of those. Uh, <laughs> no, don't even get no, me started. It, <laughs> it was. Uh, he took. Oh, well, maybe it is. He took medicine to reduce swelling. So uh, it was a bad substance, but I don't think it was a PED. Yeah, it's just one of those. Yeah, it turns out if you take Advil, you're done. Yeah, some one of those things. Yeah. I got you. Questions? Should we go to the uh, to the peeps? Yeah, yeah let's yes, go to sir. the peeps. Yes, sir. Uh, Man, good fights tonight. Good fights. It was a good card. Though I was look like I felt like the prelims were dragging, and then I rem- I'm like every single fight has been a. F- stoppage why is this taking forever and then i realized there was like three third round stoppages so it felt like they were all decisions yeah the pacing was a little off too it was (laughs) it's having to oh god (laughs) that's funny i don't want to laugh but geez (laughs) senior it's having two ears overrated um that was nasty. Pretty what nasty was that stuff. That? that was uh, um Ram, 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 Ramiz, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Ramiz. Uh, Ramiz. Against Ramiz. Max Griffin. Max Griffin. Yeah. yeah. Man, Ramiz good, had a good bad performance night. from Max. Two groin yeah, shots. He, he had two groin shots. He was on he was dry heaving in the cage. His face was all busted up. And then he lost an ear. Yeah, it was bad. That was reminiscent what, 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 of the of Johnny Campbell. What was your reaction Campbell. when you saw that? I was like, again? again. It sounds <laughs> like MMA. I was like, wow. It was the same exact thing. I was just like, oh, man. Just like Johnny Campbell. It was like exactly yeah. the same thing. Your, your ears just hanging off. So from an elbow, too. Like, just just gnarly. My favorite part was when they st- the ref stopped the fight, and Ramiz was like, what, what, what? Why are they stopping it? And why he's going like this, his ears going bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> I was like, oh. Is this- yeah, like, I had to look at him up because I didn't know who he was. I, well, I recognized the name. And I couldn't remember if it was because he had fought in the UFC before or because I had, like, watched a prelim fight. He hasn't fought in, like, more than an almost in almost two years or something like that. That was like his first. That was like his UFC debut. The last time he fought, Casey Casey Kenny was headlining the LFA card. I looked it up. Now right. Casey Kenny had like four wins in the UFC since then. So uh, yeah, he's been out for he's been out for a minute. I don't know what for, but to be out for that long and come back and have your ear ripped off is sucks. To, that sucks. <laughs> his debut got like booked and rebooked like three or four different yeah. times too. So. Yeah. But- Max Griffin looked really good tonight. Like he kept switching stances. He's very active. His wrestling defense is really good. Although Ramiz didn't really shoot for any takedowns, which is super surprising because that's what he does. He takes you down and submits you. A uh, good win for Max. Uh, do we think Dana changes his mind and books to share versus Blahovich, or will Dana do Izzy versus Jan? Because in my mind, he needs coaches for Tough Thirty. Uh, I don't think. I don't think either of those options are going to be tough 30 coaches i mean if you want to do izzy and maybe john jones that's something i honestly think they're going to do colby and mazadal as the coaches i would put that's a lot just of my, money on that. yeah that's that's what i think will end up happening but we'll see i don't even know how they're going to pull this off in a in a pandemic like i know bubble and hotel and all that stuff but like are, is colby and miles at all going to be there too like are they going to be in the gym with these guys they're going to be on a screen doing like zoom calling coaching like how is this all going to work that's what i'm curious about but to answer your question joseph at least from my opinion i'll get your take i don't think there's any chance this happens unless izzy just wants like quote unquote deontay wilder money and doesn't get it that's other than that, I, I don't see Dana changing his mind. Any, what would you rate it from like one to ten, Jose? That Dana actually has a a change of heart and goes with meritocracy here. Zero. 
Zero. You're very rare uh, with the zero percent. Zero percent. I bet if anything, Glover Teixeira could weigh in as a replacement like Michael Chandler. Because remember, I was talking with uh, – who was it? Uh, Rick Lee, who works in the behind the scenes of the UFC. I was talking with him for a little bit. And remember when Brad Tavares fought Izzy? Yep. Thiago Santos weighed in as a replacement in case Brad Tavares couldn't fight. So we were that close to getting Israel out of sign and Thiago Santos at middleweight for five rounds. So I bet they could do that. I bet Glover could weigh in as a backup for one of them. Uh, like, like Michael Chandler and like, oh, like 14 other people happened to do that same card. And not, like we were finding out as the weigh-ins were going on. Uh, so yeah, I could see Glover maybe doing that, but I don't think they're going to officially make, Blahovich versus Teixeira because champion gets top billing, and Jan versus Izzy because it'd be for light heavyweight, so Izzy would still get the blue corner. Uh, so yeah, I, I, they're not going to book it official. If anything, Teixeira will probably be a replacement. Stand by, stand by, fighter. They're going to make Teixeira the the special guest referee. Then we get all three. I would, dude. I feel like if there's one guy in the light heavy, heavyweight division that would be a good referee, it would be Glover Teixeira. I think he would be fair. Yeah. I think he would be fair. Hundred percent. He's also like, you gonna argue? Like he's like, he's like, say something, say something. But then he'll, 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 he'll help you up, you know. He'll, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, I, I, yeah. I unfortunately, I think to share, he will be used as a uh, leverage by the by yeah. the, by Dana. So like, whatever Izzy, hey Izzy's like, I want this amount of money, and he was like, well, he's like, ah, to share, would take it for this amount, you know, and he'll. I, that's the only reason I see to share getting this fight, like Gilbert Burns. <laughs> No, not even Gilbert Burns. I'm th- I'm thinking uh, uh, Eubanks. Remember when remember you when Eubanks and Shevchenko were gonna headline MSG, mm-hmm. <laughs> something like that. Oh, that's <laughs> right, yeah. Because I wrote that story where Sajara went off on Dana White. She was telling the story of how she called Dana White from like a parking lot and was like pacing the parking lot, screaming at him. And Dana was like, "God damn, <laughs> like let's get her." And then she missed White. <laughs> oh yeah, God. Yeah, it's just – I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately, yeah. but we'll see. Yeah. What else we got? Here's a little preview for on to the next one. How about Giga Chikadze versus no. Ryan Hall? Chikadze <laughs> is looking to stay active. Hall is healed up from no. his injury. Let's make it happen. Uh, I, I'm i I'm a no as well. No, I don't want to see Chikadze – like J- J- Giga Chikadze was talking about Arnold Allen. Like, he started off talking about Arnold Allen. I was like – I want like that's an awesome fight. Both guys undefeated in the UFC, like in the prime of their careers. Like they're 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 awesome. Like to propel them moving forward. He's like Arnold Allen was supposed to fight Jeremy Stevens, and then Jeremy Stevens fell out. So Arnold Allen didn't have an opponent. So maybe I should fight Jeremy Stevens next. And I was like, what a stupid call out. Call out Arnold Allen if you're gonna do that, the undefeated fighter, or fight Edson Barbosa. I've been saying that. Since Edson Barbosa dropped on a featherweight, I've been wanting that fight. And Gage Chikazi called him out, and then they fought on the same card twice, twice, and they haven't fought each other. Come on, make that fight. Give it to me. Here's here's what's gonna happen, okay? Because I, I thought Giga was brilliant with the call out because he said I offered I, he was because he was offered the fight with Arnold Allen when Stevens dropped mm-hmm. out there, and that's the reason Gigi even got on this card because he was offered the yeah. fight with Arnold Allen because Allen was supposed to fight Stevens on this card, and Allen because I've talked to members of his team and he said, "Listen, we got offered the fight, but we're undefeated in the UFC. We're top ten. We want a ranked guy. Like Stevens is a ranked guy. That makes sense. So I would rather wait a month. Like if I have to wait a month for Stevens to come back, I'll do that. We want Barboza." We'll, we'll do that. If we have to wait till December to do it, that's fine. But if we don't get a ranked opponent on a week's notice, we're not taking the fight. And you can't blame him for that. Mm-hmm. So what I think is g- going to end up happening is I think Barboza versus Allen, and then we do Chikadze versus Stevens because that's a winnable fight for Giga. He's going to get a guy that's going to stand and bang with him. It's a top 10 guy. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of wins. He's been finished a couple of times. But still, that's that's a good name to have on the resume. That puts you in the rankings, and that puts you probably puts you right in the top 10. And then you can book Allen versus Chikadze if you want to. You're talking about Giga Jeremy Stevens? Yeah. Giga versus Stevens. I liked, yeah, yeah. I liked the call. I thought it was no, perfect. Because I think I he want, knows he's not getting the Allen fight right now. I want Jeremy Stevens to fight Shane Burgos. I selfishly don't want that fight. I want that fight more than uh, Giga and Jeremy Stevens or Ryan Hall versus Jeremy Stevens. Giga versus Jeremy Stevens is nothing for me. I get it. It just 
there are so many other fights I want. Of everyone we named, I'd have so many more matchups I'd want besides Gig and Jeremy Stevens. But Jeremy Stevens will fight anyone and made had a really bizarre call out on Twitter. So I'm sure that fight is gonna happen. What was it? Um, what was it? Butt cheeks. But what do you think? Butt cheeks. Butt cheeks. I love the term <laughs> butt cheeks. I'll take that fight, butt cheeks. I had to, I had to read that multiple times. I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I was really hoping it wasn't autocorrect. Someone was like, "Is this autocorrect?" I'm like, "God, I hope not." I really hope this just becomes this is like added to the lexicon. I love. That. I, like, I hope I hope he does all the media day interviews and calls him butt cheeks the whole time. I'm I'm gonna not buck, not butt cheeks out in the first round. You'll see. Let's go, butt cheeks! Come on, come on, bro. <laughs> that was very. That, that was a. Maybe the best acceptance of a fight on Twitter of all time. And it took him like, uh, he did it in a matter of seconds, too. It was like 30 <laughs> seconds of the call. We, we got the butt cheeks call. So I think that's, I think that's the fight they're going to make him. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and obviously, Chikiga, Chikiga, Giga Chikazi. Chikazi. Um, he's, he's, um, yeah, Steven, I hope the Steven's fight happens because uh, we all know he's scared of Ryan Hall. So, yeah. True. He's ducking Ryan Hall. Everyone's ducking Ryan. The entire division Ryan, is ducking Ryan Hall. Have you seen Ryan Hall on social media? He uh, wants the Dan Ige fight. He wants it bad. Fight makes sense. Fight makes sense. It does make sense. I like it. I don't hate it. Uh, I think we're going to This one's a real quick one. It's not about tonight's card, but. If Leon Edwards can't get in the USA, what do you think about Michelle Pajera versus Hamzat Shemaev? Love it. I'd love to see it. They won't do it. Yeah, it just won't no. happen. But That's I'd love cool. to see it. They wanted last I heard they wanted Michelle Pereira versus Anthony Pettis. Yeah, cool. Yes, I believe that's I believe I they, they're, they're they offered it to Anthony Pettis. I believe they offered it to Anthony Pettis. He said no. Or and then they offered it Michelle Pereira to someone else and Michelle Pereira said no. And then they offered some Anthony Pettis to someone else and he said no. So then they all just ended up back to Anthony Pettis and Michelle Pereira. So they, everyone just kept saying no, so they just went back to the original fight they wanted. I don't know how I think bad it's it, I don't know how bad his injury is, but I would love to see Michelle Pereira versus Robbie Lawler. That'd be fun. I just think it's a I think I think that's a good point in both their careers. So um I just that's a fight I'm kinda like, ee, I wanna see. I and of course I, I, I know when I can get up. We're gonna get Michelle Pereira versus a dude, I, I go, oh, yeah, I think I've seen that guy fight. One of those fights. <laughs> I think I think Neil Maggie would get the, the backup shot. Well, I hope so. I hope He's so. ready and willing and able. I mean, that they He's did the everything state, in yeah. their power not to get in the fight. So yeah. if, if Leon can't get there, I think you just – you have no choice. You got to get somebody in there, and Neil will take it in a second. I so. thought I was I – was, I bet they offered Hamza – Jack Hermanson, a middleweight. They like you want to fight Jack Hermanson the week before? Yeah, they could have. Like a couple weeks before, that's a middleweight fight. That would have been a scrap too. I bet any I of bet, those fights. I bet whatever. they would have, but they're probably not sure if the probably the Leon Edwards thing is still up in the air. Uh, I would think. Yeah, you can't just yeah. scrap that yet. But that would be pretty awesome. I agree. Come on, what, what happened? What happened to the boldness that Dana used to have for Hamza? Like he shouldn't have just kept kept the Edwards Hamza fight down the line and just. Book uh, t- uh, Hermanson versus Hamzat next. Was it two weeks from now? Three weeks from now? When is that fight? It's the beginning of December. Yeah, December fifth. Wait, just double book it now. Just double book him. Like, come on. Ah, come on. That, that that's an interesting fight though. Hamzat versus yeah, Hermanson. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Should Yan Jonan get a shot at Weili Zhang in the UFC Women's Strawweight Title? No, she should not. She looked good tonight, not but looked awesome tonight. One more fight. Not yet. She looks good. awesome, but not yet. I think. I think. Yeah. She's not even ranked. She's has. Oh, she is ranked. Um, ranked. I mean, I was gonna. Eight, have I ranked, not. She's not like top five yet. Is what I was gonna say. She's not top five yet. So she's like right on the outside. This, I would like her to fight the winner of uh, He Boss and Waterson, maybe. Yeah, um, I think you give her a Sparza. Sparza's the one. That's the oh, one. Sparza just that's pulled out of the He Boss fight, right? Is Sparza hurt? Yeah, so out of the she had some small injuries. They were going to try to book it on the December 12th pay-per-view, but she wanted to wait like another month. And then at that point, like the plan was to keep Hebas on the card, and then they booked Hebas for 
the next month, which Esparza apparently was going to be ready for. So obviously the ship has sailed. They went with Watterson. That leaves Esparza free. You could do Jean Anne versus Esparza, and then you could have the cool. winner's fight. I don't know. 15 is just so good, man. It's, it's so just good. such a good division. Awesome, um, yeah, I, th- I think obviously um, Jan Jean Anne. How do we say her name again? Jan Jean Anne. Yan Jao Nan. Jao Nan. Yan Jao Nan. Yeah. Ooh. How do you say it? Esther Lin with the guest appearance. Xiao Nan. Xiao Nan? All right. Yan. Uh, <laughs> you can go back and watch our interview with with Yan Jao Nan. Yeah. I remember, remember, uh, remember that. Casey, outfit? we it's interviewed. We, yeah, yeah. We interviewed her and I said, can you please pronounce your name for us? <laughs> and she was more than happy to yeah. so it's out there it's on tape her pronouncing uh, yeah, her name on. um i think well, uh, but basically i think for tonight she we know now she is an elite star weight that's about it you know yeah. we, we know i don't think she, i don't think she's gonna get a title shot i think she needs one probably two fights because of how thick the division is at the top but um unless she gets a big like knockout finish over to say a spars in the next fight but man her wiley versus janan would be freaking awesome um if times are different, maybe in six months, nine months, if they can have that fight in China, I, I mean, who knows, man? That'd be that'd be super cool. But um, yeah, I'm just awesome. excited to see another another big player in the strawweight division. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Whaley is going to fight Rose Namajunas next, uh, probably yeah. early 2021. Yeah. I would assume fight. on the next fight island trip. Yeah, right, if once they go back there, January, February ish. I'm so, hoping February to March. Yeah. Well, who knows? Who knows? Um. Yeah. Who knows how it's going? Because the election happened, so you know the virus. Who knows how it's going to work? <laughs> True. All right. Good performance, though. She looked good. Awesome. Awesome performance. Marina Rodriguez is still sitting somewhere in there, right? Isn't she like in the top ten? She might even be above Anjana. Like that'd just be a fun striking fight. Nine. Yeah. Let's talk about this one. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm sorry. What did you say? I missed that. Yeah, she's Young nine. Marina Rodriguez. Marina Rodriguez. I, I guess it's a fun striking sure. matchup. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, is that possibly one of the unique, most unique chokes you have ever seen done by Alexander Romanov? Chokes that come to mind is uh, the Twister or the Ezekiel choke. Uh, it's, it's it's a unique. I mean, outside of yeah, I mean it's unique because I just haven't seen it really. You know what I mean? Have you seen that before, Casey? Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. When the, uh, in MMA, um, it's very rare in MMA. Um, it's it's a it's 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 a very strength choke. It's it's one of those because like you know most you know chokes have to get you on both sides. It's a choke and it's only on one side, so you you're usually not gonna get that early in a fight when a guy has lots of energy because it's it's more it's just kind of like a big brother fu choke, you know, because you just kind of stand above. You're like yeah, you're gonna tap out, and you don't really it's it's, it's a slow choke and it's just kind of it's just it sucks. Just just have a, a giant man just pressing down on your neck like that. Um, but most fighters at this level, I'm, uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, who would who do you submit? Uh, De Lima. De Lima. You can say it. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, if you a, you sh- no professional fighter should get submitted with that in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, unless you're really like getting beat up like ten aided, and then you know you're just you know bloody. Or cold. you just get caught off guard. Yeah, because like, like you just might not be like you're just yeah, like oh like it, to me when I was watching it he like started for it. I'm like what is he doing and then all of a sudden he taps him I was like I bet Delima just was like unprepared like totally caught off guard with that submission. Yeah, that it's, but it's, that should never happen. It's an it's an embarrassing one. It's an embarrassing submission to get caught in. Honestly, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just, wouldn't compare it to the twister though. I would no, no, it, no, the I, Ezekiel choke maybe because it can be slapped on like so quickly. Mm-hmm. The the twister has like steps you have to go through. While yeah. the Ezekiel choke, you just kind of like grab the neck and squeeze, and this one you just push. So yeah. it's basically the twister, except instead of getting your hand on like the other side, you just slam your forearm into the throat. But Romanov has done this before, right? He has like three yeah. submissions like that. It's so a, obviously it's the third one, yeah, third one. So obviously. It's something he goes to, and I think he goes to it because I think honestly, people um, people forget about it. People forget to train for it, and he just knows where it's at, and he just hits it right there. And and by the time you go, oh crap, I had to get out of this. It's too late, and he's it's clearly a, uh, a big man that's on you. So um, it's like it's gonna become like 
Von, like Von Fluchoff yeah. with OSP or Alexi Olenek with the Ezekiel. Like once you see it, you're like, oh, I'll never get caught. And then he does it again. And you're like, all right, now everyone, now everyone in the division is going to be training it. That's why you don't see any more go-go chokes. You don't see any more Von Flute chokes. You don't see any more Ezekiel chokes. Because now you get to that upper echelon of that division and everyone's just ready for it. What do we think about Romanov? He's awesome. In general. I love him. Awesome. Awesome. I love, yeah, I'm yeah, that's all. I just, He's like sneakily in really good shape too. Yeah. I just um dude, I I I got a kick. I just want to give big props to Dominic Cruz and I I thought he did him and Anik in the booth tonight. I thought were just they flowed perfect. You know, they 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 were never they were they were talking about the right things and maybe because it was just good fights it was easy, but I thought I thought just Cruz did a great technical breakdown the entire night. I was like, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, 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 everything. Because there was only and Trevor Whitman. I thought was great too. What, what fight with Trevor Whitman? Kick, he jumped in a lot. Uh, uh, the women, the Arlovsky fight. He talked a lot because oh, yeah, he's like, what one. is? He's like, why is why is it? Why are they telling Arlovsky he's doing a good job? They need to tell him to push the pace and right. stuff like that. Like yeah, he would openly question. Yeah. I think Dominic Cruz benefits from having just two men. And like it's just him and one other person. I think yeah. he benefits greatly from that. So it's not three people talking. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I just, um, I just really like yeah, just watching it. Yeah, it was Anik, right? It was Anik. Yeah. Not, it was, yeah, and also like Anik is never really does fight nights anymore. Mm-hmm. I know Fitzgerald was sick, so like Anik got tossed in with Dom, and Anik and Dom are like they they started off pretty much doing it together. So they those guys don't need to prepare for each other whatsoever. So uh, I know a lot of people don't like Dom doing it. A lot of people think Anik is annoying, but together I don't think anyone should be able to complain. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think that's the, the best, best combination. Yeah, I love. I, I really cool. like DC. Awesome. I love DC too. I love DC. No, I love. I really he, like he, has, he has a different, funnier. He has a more comedic mm-hmm. tone. And I love DC um, too. Um, but just I think Dom and Anik. When, like I think for like I think for like martial arts nerds you know like fight nerds I think Dom is kind of the guy to go to because he he doesn't oversell anything he's just like oh that's smart I like that that's exciting you know like 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 when you know like Rogan and DC sometimes they 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 get bizbing you know they get excited which is fun you know they're, they're almost like fans watching fights and every once in a while they, they'll give you analysis but for the most part they're like oh my god he's hurt but uh I just yeah, I just I, like I think DC is the like I agree with you 100% that for like the hardcore nerds Cruz is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> if 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 there's a big pay-per-view, DC's the guy. Yeah. Because you don't have to know anything about MMA and DC can just make you excited about anything exactly, while technically exactly, yeah. That's, that's it's a different yeah. different thing. Like well, yeah, we, yeah, the, the reason that. I brought that up cuz like I noticed how happy Dominic Cruz was just talking about when Romanoff did that uh, toss takedown coach. and he tossed his yeah. coach. He's like, did you see that? How how just perfectly t- how perfect technique that was? That was amazing. Like, he was so <laughs> impressed by that. I was like, I was like, oh, you're so cute, Dom. You're so cute. <laughs> yeah, Cruz is great on those fight nights. Remember, remember when Joe Selecki submitted Austin yeah. Hubbard? I think it was. Uh huh. And he walked us. He walked everybody through like what Hubbard needed to do, what Selecki was doing so great, and. Until he locked on the standing rear naked choke, like I thought that was but then, such. But then good you remember you seen that video of Habib talking to DC about Dominic Cruz, no, where because do you remember when Dominic Cruz, Dominic Cruz was on commentary during Habib McGregor, and there was the moment, and I think one of the rounds where Habib is just on top, just punching holes through Connor's head. This rent and oh. Dominic Cruz is like Connor's making him tired by dodging by doing all this. He's making him tired. And everyone in the comment Twitter was like, "What are you t- like? No, Connor's not doing this on purpose, bro." <laughs> and then there's a video. I think it was like one of those vlogs that follows the H- H- AKA guys around. And Habib is like, "DC, come here." He's like, "Tell your boy Dominic." <laughs> and then as soon as he said it, DC just started laughing. He's like, "What is this? Like, you make me tired by me punching him? <laughs> what is this?" <laughs> I never. Was, I think I heard this. He's like, "Tell your boy. Funny. Tell your boy. I'll send you. I'll send it to you after." He's like. All tweet is like, tell your boy, tell your boy, like, what is this? I punch him head. He make me tired. Come on. <laughs> hey, Dom's a great. You can't get him all right. You can't. You can't. No, you can't. You can't get him all right. That was you a three man booth. Think, yeah. I also don't think they wanted to just have Connor just get his ass beat, so they were looking at for anything positive to say. Yeah, I, I get. Yeah. Like I said, that was the I, truck. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah. That was the tr- yeah. You, that you was know the what? Truck. And also, you gotta remember that that was a that was a packed arena too. 90% Connor fans. So uh 
I can see the uh, you know the the emotion and the energy kind of sway you. Back when people were allowed to go to that, fights, uh, those strange that's that Tucson education, bro. <laughs> Not like up here in Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> this, um, I don't know what this question is was referring to because I didn't watch it, but um, tell me if you can tell me what it means. Uh, what did you think of Arlovsky's post-fight oh, talk? Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. There you go. What did you think of Arlovsky's post-fight talk? He said he didn't want to engage in the wars he had before and mentioned Dana's name. Seemed quite angry about the pressure to put on wild, exciting fights. Um, I will say, I mean, if this is from the scrum, then I didn't see it because I think it was happening as we were on. So, I mean... Okay, I might just not, yeah. not seen this quote. I mean, I don't... Bl- I, I don't disagree with him. Like he's just fighting. He's yeah. fighting smart now. Fighting smart. You're on the wrong side of forty at heavyweight. Like, come on, get your full paycheck. Just go and win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's probably he probably cleared a good amount tonight. Like when we went two fifty for, for for UFC two what was it two forty four was that the BMF fight at MS at MSG? Okay. Yeah, it was me, Casey, Danny, and Esther were covering that fight. Danny Segura. And we were making picks, and Jairzinho was fighting Arlovsky. And I remember Casey's like, why is Arlovsky fighting this guy? Like, no one knows who he is. I'm like, that dude's going to destroy Andre Arlovsky. And Danny was like, that dude's a monster. And that's exactly what happened. And then Arlovsky's like, I didn't even know anything about him. I just showed up to fight. And I have a feeling that was a huge wake-up call for Arlovsky you can't just show up and fight no name heavyweights, especially Jair Zeno Rosenstreak. Like you Google his name, you see his kickboxing record, and he walked in there just like there's the photo that Esther took of Arlovsky, just like his butt is in the air, oh, and okay, his now face I, yeah. is face yeah, down. I remember that one? Ooh. And Jair Zeno was just like, what? Right. Like that's what happens, <laughs> man. Like and like don't don't you can't over. And so like since then he's had all these like meticulous fights he's not going in there to take a risk but he's that's taking who, every fight that's who exactly who are lot well, if we look at our Aussie's comment about you know dana i guess yeah it seems like there's some behind the scenes shenanigans where like hey you need to be more exciting but this is exactly why our is in the ufc still at his pay rate too because like like the ufc booked jarzinho versus andre because you got to be the name to be a name and who has UFC like wanted Arlovsky, Tanner, wanted Tanner to win? And no, it didn't happen tonight. But yeah, that's who Arlovsky is. Arlovsky, like Stepe Miocic, got his title shot against Verdum by beating Arlovsky. Francis Ngannou fought Arlovsky when he was coming off those like three wins in a row and just crushed Arlovsky. Like Arlovsky's pretty much been fed to the top five of heavyweight right now. Everyone who in the top five has pretty much made a name for, off. Off of Arlovsky, and I and they're they're trying to do that still. Like, I guarantee you, if Arlovsky wins another fight and Cyril Gan beats JDS, they're gonna make Cyril Gan Andre Arlovsky because that's exactly the matchmaking. I can't. I'm surprised they didn't make that already because that's exactly the type of matchmaking the UFC will want. Like, they're not gonna give Andre Arlovsky Blagoy Ivanov because he beats him. What does that do for the UFC? They want Andre Arlovsky to be a stepping stool for these young heavyweights. I know who he's going to get next. He's going to fight Romanov next. Possibly. There you go. Young heavyweight. That's the fight. Greg Hardy or, Rom- or Romanov. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, hope, Romanov's the fight. Those. I think I hope, that's what I, I hope do. the UFC is behind Romanov because I, I dig him. I, 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 like, I like him. I like him a lot. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, Andre, Andre Arlovsky versus any of those names is a fun fight. But you got to know what they're trying to do. Like, Frank Edgar, remember when Frankie fought Yair? Frankie's like, yeah, the UFC wants me to lose. I know that. They want Yair to win. I'm just going to not let that happen. I agree. And then Frankie did treat him accordingly. Used his head as a basketball. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But thank you for the question, Jake. Yeah, I, know, I have to go back and watch it. But I don't listen. He has every right to say that if, if that's how he feels. But you probably just got Roman off. You probably just pissed Dana off, and now he's going to yeah. feed you to Alexander yeah. Roman off. Is Dana talking tonight at the post-fight press conference? If he doesn't, Have typically speaking, if he doesn't come first, he ain't coming, and it seems like he ain't coming tonight. I have tonight, a feeling so. he's not because he spoke at the last contender series. So yeah. I think he's at the and point where if we get him, <laughs> like, 
at fight at, during on Fight Island, the media there would be like, "Well, he just spoke to us at the press conference, so he's probably not going to speak to us now. He just spoke to us after weigh-ins, so he's probably not going to speak to us now." So you can you can kind of gauge when Dane is going to talk and when he's not based on when if he had talked that week already. Yeah, yeah I think there's a lot. And plus, of with the election, yeah, yeah, with the election results, yeah. you kind of expected it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really. Oh, it's it. official. Huh? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I was just oh, being a jerk. Ah, hey, stick to sprouts. Stick to sprouts. Stick to stick sprouts. To sprouts. <laughs> What's next for Trevin Giles? It's a good win. Good win. That was a good win. Um, I think he's just back in the middle of the pack. You know, just. I think you stay ready. I think you stay ready in case some of these fight, any of these fights fall out. Yeah. A middleweight. Yeah. Who's uh, who's Buckley fighting next? He's fighting Jordan Wright. Buckley versus Giles is fun. <laughs> Giles wins. Yeah, if that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, Jordan or, or Kevin Jordan Holland Wright gets absolutely. Down. If Kevin Holland gets just pieced up by Jack Hermanson, why not just rebook that fight? Was that was that, that was the original fight? Yeah, yeah, it was an old Trevin Giles is the one that passed out before kept right right at the it was, walkout. It was, it was Holland. Okay, I didn't know who his opponent yeah. was. I couldn't remember who the opponent no. was. I, I think I think uh, Trevin uh, Giles. Um, I think he's kind of at the point in the UFC where good for him. He got a win. Uh, it seems pretty. Hopefully, it seems pretty clear from my non medical eyes that whatever happened before was just a freak thing, and he's good to go. And um, yeah, I just we'll, we'll see him. We'll see him again in a few months, you know, and uh, we'll see what happens then. But I I don't really think he's at a point where, yeah, he's got to fight this guy, you know. Yeah. Maybe like a Maki Patolo around there. Yeah, something you know, like just that around there. What about uh, Darren Stewart? He just lost to Kevin Holland. Yeah, close fight. Real and then a fun fight. Yeah. There's and Darren Kasang wants and I... to keep on fighting. So like, yeah. And Sang and I would be a, a scrap too. Duran win. Does he have a fight? He's just yeah. He's fighting uh, uh, right. Braga yeah. NATO yeah. on oh, is he off, is he off December nineteenth. Is he off suspension? Yeah. Yeah, he's fighting December nineteenth. Oh wow. Okay, I didn't know that. I think it was retroactive. Like One of so, those things. Okay. he had already yeah. been like suspended most of it by the time they announced it. You could give him Phil Haas. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. Ooh. There you go. There we go. We got Ooh. it right there. Now my, Thank you, now sir. Now I have, now, now I have, you know, yeah. the bad guy hands. The Thank Scott you, Hall. That, that, that was it. That was the answer. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Panza. We got Bill Hall versus here. anybody, man. Yeah. Some Something in that range, though. Uh, anything else? Real quick, real quick. Um, uh, Thoughts on, yeah, let's go with this one. Thoughts on the next pay-per-view card? Let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, if we're talking, if we're talking sizzle, not the best. <laughs> it just isn't. I mean, let's just be honest. But if we're talking like people who love watching like really good fights, I think it's a really good card. Two fifty-five. Like, you're really talking about two fifty-five. Yeah, yes. I don't hate it, man. I love. I'll watch Shogun who will fight any day of the week. Okay, let me let me ask a question real quick. We're looking at this as journalists. Look at this as just a dude sitting on a couch with seventy dollars in his hand. That's how you have to kind of see these. I think that you got you got yeah. to look at them differently than fight nights. It, it, it's a tough one. I mean, I, I got I got to be honest. Like if, I'm, if excited. Still, I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to see Valentine. I want. I love seeing Shevchenko fight. I love seeing dominant fighters dominate. I want to see if Maya can do it. I'm interested in Alex Perez and Figueredo. Yeah, you know, and there's a oh Moreno Roval. That's a ridiculous fight. Ridiculous fight off, but it's. Are you gonna tell your buddies to pay seventy dollars for that? Does this one have Mike Perry on the card? Right. Yeah. It says no, Perry and Simmons. It's on the main card too. Yeah. No, Perry Perry and Means is. Well, is I'm, pretty pretty sure card? I'm pretty sure. But no, because Law yeah, right. is supposed to be the pay per view. Yeah, so that means right, the Count Jukic right. against Cynthia Calvillo fights on this card too. Yes. That's the, that's on the main card. Mm-hmm. This is a so, really good wait fight. A minute. So yeah. you know, so you know what I what I noticed. Moreno and Royval not on the main card anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. They, they they're putting Perry Means on on the on the graphic tonight. They put Perry Means on the main card. Yeah, 
And, and Moreno yeah. Royval got, got got knocked down. You you have a flyweight title fight, and you have to <laughs> load it up with. The, you know that fight's gonna freaking roll. You just know it. And I don't like like seriously. Like, that, that's a guaranteed awesome fight, Moreno Royval. Guaranteed. Can, like, oh, that fight. There's no way that fight sucks. You put it on the main card. You showcase these freaking flyweights. Don't put fucking Mike Perry on the main card. <laughs> Fuck. I was having a good day. I was having a good Moreno, day. <laughs> that's Moreno, they're gonna put Moreno, Moreno Royval probably be the featured fight. That's gonna be the. Oh yeah, you don't like the twenty fivers? You best buy this pay per view now because these two are just gonna beat the brakes out of each other. That's gonna be a great fight. Okay. I can't wait for that one. If it's the, if it's the 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 main event on the prelims, you know, which actually is what the most most people that has the most literal eyeballs watching. Actually, sure. hold on, wait, wait. It's not ESPN. It's ESPN two prelims. Ew. Oh, come on. ESPN two, ESPN plus. So it's the it's not even big ESPN prelims. Oh man, bummer. It's the dose. Yeah. This is not on the Ocho, you know. <laughs> Listen, it's. I don't think it's. I think it's gonna be a fun card. Okay, right. it's it, the steak is gonna be delicious. I love. I'm really excited, selfishly, for the Shogun Paul Craig rematch. That's fun because I'm. I love Shogun, and Paul Craig is. You never know what you're gonna get. He's gonna. He could be losing for two rounds and four minutes and fifty nine seconds and. Somehow win. <laughs> so I always watch Paul Craig fight. And then Lipsky the one and mis- was on that card too then, right? Yeah, Lipsky and Shevchenko yeah. was on the card. Um, the very beautiful Alan Joban is back. Against um, Jared Gooden. Yeah. That's oh, an and, understatement. Uh, and, and Buckley, Jordan Wright. You know, I mean, yeah, there's fun fights on the prelims, the free fights. Um, Kyle Dock is. Uh, yeah, Kyle Dock is on that card. That He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Lewis, uh, Lewis Kosey makes his UFC debut. Tell me about him. I don't know anything about him. He's one of the the brothers that won on the contender oh, series. Okay, yeah, they I both fought on the gotcha, card. Gotcha. I think his brother's fighting like I think he's on the December card. This one just got added. Uh, oh, Sasha. So do uh, you is is two fifty six better though? Oh, we do. I think it, it obviously the top two fights are clearly better. The top two fights are clearly better. If it was I mean, straight- I'm gonna go without actually looking at it. I'm gonna say yes. It's, it's a champ. It's two title fights. You got Nunez, Megan Anderson, and then like the Coleman event is worth the price anyway. It's Sterling and it's Jan versus Sterling. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Vittori, Jacare, JDS, yeah. Daryl Gunn, Casey. That's Mackenzie Dern versus John Deroba. Oh, that's on that card. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Next pay per view yeah. rules. Very excited about Chase that. Hooper versus Peter Barrett, Tisha Torres, Angela Hill, Ooh, Billy Q, and Gavin Tucker. Gavin. Yeah, Gavin Tucker. It's a good scrap. You know what? I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shit on, the, on the, this pay per view too much coming up the 255 because the original booking was Figueredo Garbrandt, which would have been very interesting. So um, can't fault the, that's just bad luck by the UFC. You know, it just happens. So it's uh, unfortunate because we're well, when that fight was announced. Everyone was like, oh, Alex Perez deserves it more. Alex Perez deserves it more. And now he has the fight, and everyone's like, oh, man, Cody Garver would have been more interesting. Well, I, I think we didn't think it was going to be main event for a pay-per-view. I yeah. figure it's one of those fight night main events or, or co-main for a pay-per-view. I think, right. yeah, it's just we like Alex Perez, but I don't think the fan base is used to shelling out 70 maybe, bucks the same uh, fight. That's the problem. Maybe we'll have Shorty Torres on the A side, considering he fought Alex Perez, and this is his weight class. All right. Yeah, I miss Shorty. Huh? Yeah, good call. All right. One more He's doing good. Uh, yeah. I'm just, there's a lot of people who are like think that Shevchenko should have got the, the main event spot. That could have done something. But I think from – honestly, the last thing I'll say is I think competitive – from a competitive standpoint, I think Perez versus Figueredo is the better fight. Agreed. Just based agree. on their styles. Agreed. My, I think, uh, think Figueredo would have beat Garbrandt. Pretty easily, Ooh. not easily, but I think you would have finished them. I think but would, yeah. that's just me. I agree. No, I I, I, agree. I agree. The men's flyweight fight should 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 be headlining over the ladies' fight just because of the competitive nature. Uh, mm-hmm. um, but um, dude, who knows, man? If, you know what? This Shevchenko has Shevchenko really been in a has she been in a great fight like a great back and forth fight? I know she's been in close fights, but has she been. You know, just like oh my god, she just doesn't have that. Not that's not in her, but she, 
she hasn't had a war, right? I'm not. Am I missing? Am I just, forgetting one? It's just the Nunez fights were, and those aren't wars. Yeah, they were, but they were, they were really close. High level fights, but yeah. So who knows? That's just I'm, I'm being very optimistic that this is gonna be just yeah. a brawl. <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. What else we got? Every fight time. Uh, <laughs> people tell me uh -oh. you see any do you see anything in the comments to be brought up i don't see anything let me just look and see if we got anything on twitter some general questions about just yeah someone, I, I mean, says, I, someone, I, someone wants to add that the prelims are going to be on espn too because of the color because of college football will be on espn sure. So next, uh, I think, because next week's card is kind of blah. I mean, I like Makachev Ooh. versus RDA. Uh, yeah. Razak Alassan versus Chaos Williams, co-main event. Julian Marquez, Saperbeg Safarov, Dante Mays, Rocky Martinez, Antonio Royo versus Eric Anders. That's interesting. Kay Hansen versus Corey McKenna. Ashley Yoder, Miranda Granger, Alex Morano, uh, Reese McKee. Luis Smolka, Jose Quinones, Random Marcos versus Kanako Murata, and Tony Gravely versus Geraldo De Freitas. That's the card next week. Not uh, and we yeah. lost Brian Barberina versus Daniel Rodriguez. Yeah, today. I saw that. He's, he's, he's had surgery. surgery. What, what, what was wrong with Mr. Barberina? Um, yeah, some sort of uh, not non-COVID related, luckily. I think we're not. No, we're yeah, not, not going to lucky. <laughs> Let me dig through it and see if we can find it. Uh, internal bleeding from a couple of ruptured arteries in his omentum. Hmm. All right. I got to look at I find out what the omentum is. Oh, oh. Uh, the uh, omentum is a large, flat, adipose tissue layer nestling on the surface of the intro. Paranoid organs besides fat storage, omentum has key biological functions in immune regulation and tissue regeneration. So I'm, I have no freaking idea. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. I have Hedge. no idea. It's not, I was going to say it's some, I was going to oh. guess it was somewhere in the stomach, but it, it is stomach liver and it wraps around the intestines. Oh, Jose, you muted, I think. Can you hear Jose? Yeah. Do you hear Jose? Yeah, he's muted. Are you muted, Jose? Super muted. Unbelievably muted. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely muted. Oh, am I? What? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Back. <laughs> you anything? A story I was like, life. I literally just story of your life. I didn't even touch anything. Yeah, right. It was working yesterday. I didn't. <laughs> the Jose Whatever. Young's curse continues. Yeah. Oh, you don't even know. <laughs> we don't have to get. Into we, we there's so many more things that have happened. I'll tell you about them another time. <laughs> Uh, are you just gonna have a whole podcast just of your bad luck? Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Motivate the rest of us. Uh, do we have anything else, or is this good enough? Good time uh, to know, say goodbye. Fly, fly through this real quick. Uh, just... <laughs> Fight of the year. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, I think we're all. Is that a play on words, or? Yeah, I think it's playing. Go back to the. I was I was that, I, I was trying to think of a good ear pun and at the time and I, yeah this is like six hours later but yeah thank you Anthony Watkins yeah <laughs> so, yes that's good uh yeah we just got some yeah some questions about Colby and um, Jorge on tough you know all that kind of stuff but nah, I don't think we need to talk about I think that that's a, that's a no brainer that is the no brainer coaches right there yeah uh, neither of those guys are gonna fight so they just have him man I okay. Moving on from this card, I'm really hoping Colby does a whole gimmick where like he's all Joe Biden. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> hoping, I'm just, like, I'm hoping he's just like he's totally like Medicare for all, you know, oh uh, and everything. Like, Isn't that uh, Kevin just, Lee's thing? Kevin Lee does, is about that life, right? Yeah, but that's not his gimmick, you know. He's just about that life. But I'm he was, like, didn't he speak at a Bernie rally? I don't know if he's. He did. Oh, yeah, she spoke yeah. that one. Okay, I wasn't sure if he spoke yeah. that one. Yeah, I think um, Leslie Smith did too. I think there's two yeah, probably. fighters. But, uh, yeah. 
Kevin Lee's head tattoo is might be the story of 2020. Have you it seen is, this, Casey? Uh, as I someone it. I saw it. with a yeah. lot of ta- as someone with a lot of tattoos myself, it is very well done. I don't understand it, and I am not a fan. Like it's well done. I'm not a fan of solid black anywhere above the neck. Like lines is fine, but anything colored in solid black, I think looks strange. And he has so much. It looks like it's all scarred up already. Like if you ever seen a scarred tattoo, it looks like it's just scarring immediately. And I don't get it, but it is well applicated. Tattoos are Agreed. very personal. And if you get a tattoo mm-hmm. to impress other people, you're doing it for the wrong reason. So if Kevin Lee likes it, you go. That's all that matters. All that I matters. say that all, all the time. As long as you like it. And he's in the right profession. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Though so if you see, uh-huh. it goes up to his hairline. So now he can never shave his head. Because then his tattoo will just stop. It looks, yeah, it looks intense. I don't know. I'd, <laughs> it or you'd have to intense. add it. You'd have to add upon it. What? It's like Bam, a samurai Bam, helmet, style. right? Is that what it? Is? That's what I assumed it was. I, yeah, I, I, I think figure. it's a samurai helmet. Speaking of which, Casey, you have a PlayStation, right? Yes, sir. Someone messaged me a PlayStation game, and I'd never heard of it. And I was going to ask you about it, and now I can't remember what the. If it's, is, is it overcooked? <sighs> No, it was a samurai game. Oh, the ghost, ghost of um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one. Yeah. That someone that, that watches, someone that watches the A side, uh, said we were talking about. I was talk, I talked about Infinity for Lone Wolf and Cub. Said I should play that only PlayStation game, and I go, Casey's the only one I know that has a PlayStation. Yeah. So I figured I asked you. People have been telling me to play that game too, but I got shit to do, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you spend like almost all of quarantine playing The Last of Us? Yeah. That's and like, okay. like yeah and like I, and I was like okay I gotta stop playing because I want actually I want to play it again and guy oh I'm gonna change the settings or do it like you know, you know like whatever take away the listen mode all this you know gamer stuff I was like oh, yeah, yeah. God, like I just got crap to do I, like, you know hey so like, cyberpunk I'm just once cyberpunk comes out you're not you guys will never hear from me again <laughs> Sandy fam loves overcooked. I don't even game. know what Overcooked oh, is. Oh, my goodness. It's the best game. It's the best. Me and Sandy Fam. Sandy Fam, let's, let's, let's play some Overcooked. We're good. Cyberpunk has been pushed back again. I know Robert Whitaker wants to play it. And then apparently Mass Effect's getting remastered for the next gen. And the new Elder Scrolls might be Xbox only. So I have to buy an Xbox. <laughs> I don't know um, what any of these things mean. Yeah. None of them. You're, I probably you will at some point. You don't need to. You have a kid, man. It's not like you have time for video games. Yeah, he plays. We have a PS3, and he is he's loves Spider Man, so he plays the Spider Man game. Spider-Man but he's two? also uh, Spider Man Three. He's playing. I think. Get him Spider Man Two. It's the best okay. the best superhero video game, probably until the most most recent Spider Man that everyone freaks out about. Yeah, everyone, I like everyone, it. It's kind of tough. This. He gets yeah, his ass beat. I play the Spider Man game too. I never but played has, the new uh, one, but. He's obsessed with Chuck E. Cheese right now. So I don't know if you've got I mean, Toze, you probably know what Chuck E. Cheese is because you grew yeah, up in 100%. the restaurant. Yeah. And I, the, I thought the, Chuck yeah. E. Cheese went out of business. They are, they're all out of business now. Oh no, 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 no. They're, no, no, they're still they're still around. We went to we went to one a few weeks back. Really? There's one open in Worcester, Massachusetts. It was the biggest piece of caca ever. Chuck E. wasn't even Worcester, there. Mass? It was like did, did, home, did, of the, did, the, yeah. home of the Wo home of the Sox. Oh, well, the Wo Sox. It was so bad. Did they have so the, mechan- bought the mechanical band? The, uh, yeah, yeah. The, an- is the animatronics. Yeah, the animatronics. It's, oh, it's so scary. I love it. So my wife and I were like, I can't believe we drove all this way and Chucky's not even out here to like meet the kids <laughs> or anything. So we bought, we found a, a, a Chuck E. Cheese Wii game for like $3 and we bought that for him. You can like play basketball and ski ball and all that other stuff. So he's obsessed with it. So I'm like, what a what a what a savior that is. And we don't have to go there anymore. You can just play the damn video game. Yeah. Par- parenting one oh one. You don't have to ever go to Worcester, Massachusetts now either. So it's a win win. Yeah. There's I mean, there's one in Albany that's like thirty five minutes away, but they're not open, obviously, with the pandemic. But for some reason this one in Worcester was open, so we drove an hour and a half to go to that. Chuck E. Cheese is going out of business. Most of them are closed. But there's still a couple open. Yeah, the one I just the one, need to get through. Like me, when I, it's gone, it's, it's gone. I just need like another year. I just need like another year or two until he's over it, and then 
we don't have to worry about it anymore. Then that's it. We don't have to make those drives ever again. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> uh, I think I've only been at Chuck E. Cheese once in my life. Yeah, yeah. That means that means you've only lived one day in your, of your life. Probably. Yeah. Super overrated. So expensive too. Oh, and the pizza is horrible. It's I don't know, Mike, you lived in New England. You ever hear of United Skates of America? That was a big thing in southern New England. It was like the biggest heard indoor of skating and laser tag place in like southern New England. That's so I think that kind of – like Chuck E. Cheese never could survive in Rhode Island because of that. Yeah, we had we had a place near where we lived like outside of Boston in Saugus Mass called Roller World, and it was very similar to that. Big roller, like rollerblading, roller skating yeah. spot, with video and we, games and, and Ma- all that stuff. Massachusetts has Laser Laser Gate, which is the big one. That it's yeah. in that big, big giant warehouse, man. Now we're talking about Laser Gate and United States of America. Casey's like, wow. So, uh, so I'm, we had I'm, good times. I'm, I'm from Texas, and we had uh, our big thing was like uh, Fame City. Six shooting guns. Yeah, and, 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 and shooting City. people. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fame City and just, shooting guns. What do you guys do? Just go hang out at the Alamo. Yeah, just we, we just we just hang out in the basement. In the basement. Ah, oh, thank you for saying that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I could we could do Pee Wee's Big Adventure all day, Casey, all day long. The stars Exhibit at Q night are big and bright. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas. Yes. Oh my God, I could I could quote that movie forever. Oh God, <laughs> tell him Lodge Madge sent ya. Oh my God, oh, that's God. one of the. Dude, that scene still scares the shit out of me. I even though I know it's coming every time. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I, 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 I I like you, like you. <laughs> I went on uh, the, the dinosaurs. I um, it's out on the way. To, if you go to Palm Springs, I've been in the dinosaur and everything. It was like, I was like oh, oh, really? Mm-hmm. It's a creationist. Bad, well, it, it went out of business, but for a while, it became a uh, a creationist museum. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner, Dottie. A rebel. Rebel. All right, we gotta go. I could. Do, this will be the next hour of our give, lives. Give, 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 me, give me, give me, five more. Give me five more. Five more lines. Five more. Uh, I gotta. Can, 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 can you give me your impression? Can you give me your impression when, uh, when Pee Wee walks out of the pet store? About the. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, my my. I mean, my favorite, the best line in the whole movie is uh, after he, after Francis says, "I can get it." My daddy said, "I can have anything you I can I want." And what I want is your bike. And he freaks out laughing. And he stands up and she goes, "It's not for sale, Francis." <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good, Mike. I'm really glad. Uh, me and my I'm wife's really like, glad I'm really glad after like. Wait, you've been with us for eight months, and we j- I just find this out now. <laughs> Me and my wife, now my now wife's first date was at Six Flags in Springfield, Massachusetts. On oh, yeah. it was an October night, and uh, she quoted Pee Wee's Big Adventure like out of nowhere, and I was just like, I turned and looked at her. It was like, it was like Hard Wayne's eyes. World, where <laughs> where it's just like Dreamweavers playing in the background. I was like, oh my god! And then we spent like. Two hours walking around freezing cold Six Flags, quoting Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and I was like, "I am gonna marry this woman," and that is what happened. <laughs> all right, we gotta, all right, we gotta go because we'll do Pee Wee's Big Adventure yeah. all day. Maybe we'll do, a, maybe we'll do a watch along on here one of these days. Yes. We can do that. So, all right. uh, pretty good card. Hope you guys enjoyed it. UFC v- Vegas 13 in the books. I'm sure we'll be talking more about it on Between the Links, A Side, etc. So make sure you find us anywhere podcast networks right here subscribe all that good stuff for jose young's executive producer extraordinaire ek's delight i am mike heck good night everybody